Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, you're looking at Scott Scrambler right here. We're getting going on the exhaust. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, Scott was missing all his automatic transmission linkage for this for this Jeep. Somebody tore that out at some point, and uh, I have some linkage that he sent me. I tried my best to get the linkage to work, but um, I can't get both of these header pipes through there. I'm going to have to make custom linkage once I'm done. I just took the linkage and kind of threw it underneath for now so it's out of the way. It just it runs right in here. I didn't want to notch any tubing or anything. Uh, this is made up of uh, one piece, a starter piece here, and then another piece here, another piece here. Uh, I kind of blended everything out and stuff. This is the upper pipe. It's going to go above the skid plate and then I got some pieces on the floor there I'm working on uh, getting one to go right underneath that one both of them will go over the skid plate and then one of them will turn the bottom one the one that's on the bottom is gonna go under well, let me get these 90s we're gonna have a 90 and a 90 and that's gonna do this side of the Jeep um, and these will have these will have band clamps on them so that this whole entire piece can drop out and that's in case the transmission ever has to come out you can take that center piece out drop the whole thing down it won't be in the way um, not that anything's wrong with anything but sometimes after a while of running automatic you get so pissed off at it you just pull everything out and put a manual transmission in there that's been my case. I don't know if it's going to happen with this one, but just in case, we're going to have band clamps on there, and that's going to work out. Um, now, to get started on these, to get started on these, I have a little piece in here, uh, but it has to have a, a flange on the top. Uh, and I'm going to show you an easy way to make a flange for when you're starting with your headers. And we'll head over to the press next, and I'll show you how we do that. Okay guys, you need something like this to get going uh, and then your your three bolt flange will go under there, it'll be a gasket in there and you bolt it up, and, but you need that. Um, sometimes when you go buy these things, uh, the shape isn't right, uh, they're, they're on too much of an angle or they're just crooked and they come from China and it's just junk. Uh, so I'm going to show you an easy way to make one of these now. Okay guys, got a piece of stainless in here. Stainless is a little bit tougher. Uh, I should be doing this on the, the hydraulic press, but I got some stuff over there. I got a ball bearing here. Um, this is a three and a half inch. Could use one a little bit smaller. Okay, we're just gonna see if I can do this on, on this press. Okay, it's easier, like I say, on a hydraulic press, but we're, we're starting to get our piece with just a ball bearing, and uh, and don't go crazy. If you guys are going to do this at home, don't don't go buying a ball bearing from an industrial house. They're, they're horribly expensive. Uh, Amazon's got those for like 29 bucks. Not an Amazon fan, but for something like this. Okay, now we got to get that flattened out a little bit. So... Go. We'll flatten that guy out. Okay, there it goes. Okay. So you don't have to go to a muffler shop. You don't have to go anywhere. You can do this in your in your home. Um, like I say, I don't normally do it on the Arbor Press. It's it's much easier on the hydraulic press, but it makes a perfect flange, and and, it, and the the, uh, the, fl the the flange will go under that gasket there, seal it up tight. Okay guys, when you're putting a stainless system on a Jeep <clears throat> or on anything, you're going to be tempted by this polished Chinese crap. Okay, you can find this on eBay, you can find it anywhere. That's got a little dent in it already. You can practically just hit it with your finger and dent it. It's, it's, it's garbage. Um, a lot of guys use it. You get like four straight pieces, four uh, 180 bends, four 90 bends, four... 45 bends for a couple hundred dollars. It's it's junk. It's very thin. 
it's difficult to weld if you get your your exhaust pipes hot and you use your Jeep out in the in the weather and stuff and if your if pipe is hot and you go through a cold puddle or something that splashes on here it will split open on you it's very tempting to buy this crap um, don't do it it's you you won't enjoy it this is a USA made mandrel bent uh, 16 gauge 065 wall um, made right here in the United States it welds beautifully the, the mandrel bends are absolutely perfect and it, the difference between this and this is, is night and day but it's it's hard to really know that until this screws up on you and you got to take it all out so do yourself a favor and spend a little bit more money and get the good stuff um, and we'll talk a little bit about welding next but um, if it's if it's in your budget uh, get the good stuff here I would probably use <laughs> Uh, regular steel pipe over the Chinese stuff that's how bad it is if, if it wasn't in the budget I would get regular steel pipe instead of stainless but on Scotch Jeep here we're gonna do this one time and uh, it'll be here forever okay guys here is one of the mufflers for Scotch Jeep I got two exactly the same uh, you can see quality welds and stuff on these Okay, can you see the louvered pipe in there? Mm-hmm. Okay, if you put the muffler this way, with this being the inlet, the exhaust is going to go into the louvered pipe. There is stainless steel mesh between the louvers and the outside of this, and it's going to be quiet. If you want a real crazy sound, you turn it that way so it does not go into louvers, and it'll be a loud, crackly sound. Uh, now Scott doesn't want a crazy sound out of his, so uh, we're going to go with that side being the inlet. And that'll be nice and quiet. And uh, it'll still sound nice, but uh, it'll really muffle it down. So these are uh, five inch round mufflers. And then uh, after the mufflers, we're going to dump it out right behind the rear wheel. We're not going to come right out the back, we're going to dump it right out behind the rear wheel. And I'm going to put band clamps on the mufflers. So from the, so just in case say, a muffler gets damaged, a rock comes up, smashes the hell out of it, you'll be able to take the band clamp off each side and replace the muffler. So uh, just good insurance. If you have a 100% welded up system, uh, sometimes it could be a pain if something does get damaged. And I know Scott's going to be running this Jeep, um, you know, and when he retires and he gets to go fishing every day, he's going to be running this Jeep to some remote trout streams I'm sure and anything can happen out there but we're starting off good with a nice muffler and this will be a lifetime muffler we'll never have to change this okay guys some welding tips when you're putting all your pieces together obviously these are just right off the the band saws that I got junk you gotta clean all the junk off and let's say you needed to join two pieces of pipe if you're building a high-end race car or something you'd plug the ends You'd run some argon gas in there and you'd back gas it and the weld would come out beautiful. Uh, when we're uh, doing something like this, this is the product we use. This is called Solar Flux. Type B Solar Flux. You get this at any good welding supply house. Um, and what you do, you mix it up like a cream. And inside of that guy, inside of that guy, right on the rim there, on that rim, Put it together, tack it up. You have to mix this solar flux with methanol. So you can get yourself some methanol. And then just a little bit goes inside a container and mix it with methanol until it makes a nice cream and, uh, and you're good to go. Um, we're not doing any welding today, but um, we're going to talk a little bit about welding procedures and, and cutting stainless steel and stuff like that. But um, solar flux is much better than, um, not much better, but you, you're going to go through a lot of gas if you're doing a whole system and you have to purge this whole system with argon. You're going through a lot of gas. This works just as good if you get good coverage on the inside. So. Before you get started on your stainless setup, 
use get some solar flux get some methanol and we're gonna go out to the bandsaw I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need there for um, the best stainless cuts that you can get okay guys we're over in the fab shop uh, I'm gonna show you the best way that I know how to cut stainless tubing when you have to cut a lot of it uh, this is the do all bandsaw it's got a three speed transmission we're in high gear we are running that band our maximum speed on this guy is 10,800 feet a minute it's gonna sound like a spaceship when I start it up and uh, the blade that blade is what's called a friction blade okay it's not meant for thick material it's not meant for anything like that um, if you took this hardened file that would cut right through a hardened file without any trouble um, quarter inch is about the max that you want to use a friction blade for uh, <clears throat> it cuts stainless tubing um, the, the best uh, it, it's the best blade that I know of a, a regular blade uh, isn't going to hold up when you have a lot of cutting to do uh, you could use an abrasive wheel or something um, but this uh, I'm going to show you we're going to we're going to cut right through this piece just like this and uh, I'll show you how nice it goes through there and that blade will last 10 exhaust systems if, if I kept running stainless through it they just they don't wear out like a regular blade again it's called a friction blade you need high speed and it's going to do some you'll see some uh, sparks coming off it and stuff but um, this is how I like to cut stainless Okay guys, every time I do a stainless system, I make sure I have a friction blade. It's, like I say, it, it's the best. Uh, one other thing that I really like is my sander. And, and if you have to just take this cut, like that cut's pretty square if you hold it right. But let's say you just had to take it and take a little bit off there. Um, you can do it with a, with a hand grinder or something like that or, or whatever, uh, file, anything. But over here I got a big 30 inch Oliver disc sander and we're just going to spool this guy up and uh, and I'll show you how easy it is to make fine fine adjustments on your stainless steel <coughs> Okay guys, you can see how easy it is. And we took just a little bit off there from, from square. I think you can see that. Um, you don't have to have a massive disc sander like that. Even a little uh, six or 12 inch sander is gonna do you good when you're, when you're doing stainless and you just wanna adjust stuff just a little bit to make it go around something or just tweak it to fit better. Uh, a sander is your best friend when you're doing stainless steel work. Okay guys, just a couple tips for when you're welding stainless. Um, like I said, use the solar flux, back purge it if you want to. Uh, you want good gas coverage with stainless. I have a Furic, this is what they call the BBW cup, okay? Gas lens, it's a big cup, plenty of gas coverage when you're, when you're cruising along. You're going to get your colors, okay? Um, you could do real fine stuff, like on the very edge there. You can hold real fine welds. It's, it's built up there. I think you maybe can see the color in there, okay? 
Uh, this is a 16th inch tungsten. The BBW cup, the gas lens. Uh, you have to set your gas a little bit higher when you're using a big cup like this. Uh, I have mine set to 40 CFH. Uh, and that does a real nice job and uh, don't try and get away with a small cup don't stick big heavy 16th inch rod in a weld like that make sure you have I use 035 wire stainless wire on most of my stuff uh, like I say this is all 304 everything we're using here on Scott's project is 304 and uh, that's fine for, for what we're doing for that um, and and the tubing and everything uh, I only use two stainless companies I'm not affiliated with them or anything but I use stainless works that's where all this stuff came from and when you get into some crazy stuff race cars things like that where you need some real high temperature 321 stuff uh, burns stainless uh, is the only other place I use I use those two places for stainless stuff and um, I think if you stick with either one of those guys you're gonna be alright but um, if you have a bandsaw, get yourself a friction blade. If you have a little sander, it's going to be helpful. Uh, solar flux is going to help you. Uh, a large cup is going to help you. Uh, the right size wire is going to help you. There's a whole lot of things that are going to make your stainless work go much easier. So uh, if you have any questions, just put it in the comment below and be uh, be happy to chat with you. Okay, guys. Um, Basically, from here on in, I'm going to be on Scott's project. Um, I, I am finally, after a long, long time, caught up with everything. Uh, Bertram's engine is the last one I have to do. Uh, the other three are, are for my projects, apparently, because nobody wants to buy an engine from me anymore. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to be on Scott's Jeep 40 hours a week or more. I'm going to get the exhaust done. We're going to start it. I got a ton of body work to do, um, the painting and stuff and wiring, and there's a whole lot left to go on this thing, but I want to get the exhaust finished, and I'll show you more about the exhaust. I'll try and get you some welding footage on that. I do get a lot, a lot of questions about stainless welding. Uh, it's not that hard if you follow some instructions, um, but that's where I'm at. Uh, I, I have to get Scott finished up, and like I say, this is my last full restoration that just... Uh, they're just too too big. There's too much for me to do. I'm a one-man show. It's getting harder and harder um, to do full restorations. And um, but I want to get this one finished, and I want to give it, you know, the best the best I can do for it, you know. And that's why we're doing a nice stainless system here. Um, so things are changing around here. There'll be more on that in upcoming videos. But uh, for now, I hope you picked up some stainless steel tips, and. Um, We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.